Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in this session, we'll be discussing on how we can measure the radiation pattern of a particular antenna. So before we go into how we can measure the radiation pattern of an antenna, we need to know what radiation pattern of an antenna is. So what is the radiation pattern of an antenna? Well, the radiation pattern of an antenna is a plot of the radiation characteristics of an antenna as a function of theta and phi for a constant radial distance and a constant frequency. Well, radiation pattern is basically a plot or is a graphical plot of the radiation characteristics, certain radiation characteristics of an antenna as a function of two parameters which is theta and phi and for a constant distance from the antenna that is a constant radial distance r and a constant value of frequency f so that is what you mean by the radiation pattern of a particular antenna so for measuring the radiation pattern we need to keep certain things in mind what are those things well it is measured at a fixed distance r that is, when the radiation pattern is measured, it is measured at a particular fixed distance. First, we fix the particular distance and then the radiation pattern is measured. We can't keep changing it while it is being measured. So, it is measured at a fixed distance r and a fixed frequency f. The frequency is also fixed. And here, we saw that the particular measurement is taken as a function of two parameters theta and phi so here the value of theta varies from 0 to pi and the value of phi varies from 0 to 2 pi so these are the basic things that we need to keep in mind before we measure the radiation pattern of a particular antenna so obviously the next question that you would have in your mind is why do we need radiation patterns why are we measuring radiation patterns well the radiation pattern of an antenna is measured so that we can get a few parameters from this measurement so what are the parameters that we can get from a particular radiation pattern well we can get the first null beam width which is the fnbw then we can get the half power beam width hpbw then we can get the value of the side lobes the information about the side lobes then we can find the information about the major lobes the maxima the nulls so all these parameters can be found out if we make a measurement of the particular radiation pattern of a particular antenna so that is why we measure the radiation pattern of an antenna now that you know well now let us see how we measure the radiation pattern of an antenna so for that first let us consider a particular dipole antenna so in the previous sessions we saw that a particular dipole antenna has got three field zones outside it the first one being the reactive near field zone then being the radiating near field zone and last is the far field region so here for this particular antenna when we consider the radial distance if this is the radial distance from the particular dipole antenna, then this is the reactive near field region, then this is the radiating near field region, and the last is the far field region. So the reactive near field region ends at a distance of lambda by 2 pi. So this is lambda by 2 pi. And the radiating near field region ends at a distance of 2d squared by lambda. So now, let us assume that this particular dipole antenna produces a certain radiation. Okay, so when this particular dipole antenna produces a particular radiation, the particular radiation is measured at a constant distance r. So let us first assume that the constant distance is taken in the reactive near field region. So when we measure it in the reactive near field region, then the particular radiation produced by the antenna which is measured here is not so great. It might be measured somewhat or the radiation pattern obtained might be somewhat like this. It does not have any definitive features. It does not tell us what the actual radiation produced by this particular antenna is. So what do we do next? We move this particular fixed point to the radiating near field region. So when we measure it in the radiating near field region, we find out that the characteristics of the radiating pattern is somewhat coming into shape and it is giving us somewhat characteristics of the actual radiation that is produced by the particular antenna. So we get somewhat like this. It is coming into shape. It has got a certain characteristics, but it is not fully the particular characteristics of the particular signal which was sent by actually by the antenna. So now what do we do? We now move the fixed point R 
from the radiating near field zone to the far field region so now when we measure the particular characteristics of the radiation produced by this particular antenna in the far field region we observe the fact that an actual radiation pattern is obtained over here so at after whatever distance after this particular point that when we measure the radiation pattern of this antenna we get a correct and exact characteristics of the actual radiation that was produced by this particular antenna so therefore what do we deduce from this the fact that we deduce from this is that for having an actual radiation pattern of the characteristics of the radiation produced by this antenna we have to measure it in the far field region that is the minimum distance for the purpose of measuring the radiation pattern must be greater than 2d squared by lambda so whenever we measure the radiation pattern of an antenna we need to take a point which has a particular radial distance greater than 2d squared by lambda or in simple terms we simply need to measure the radiation pattern of the antenna in the far field region of that particular antenna so that is how we measure the radiation pattern so as we have now seen how we can measure the radiation pattern next let us go into the measurement apparatus that is required for the purpose of measuring the radiation pattern of a particular antenna so this is the measurement apparatus that we need so here first we have a transmitter that is transmitting certain signals through this particular transmitting antenna at a constant frequency f so here the frequency is a constant okay so now this transmitter is transmitting a particular radiation at a constant frequency f so in order to measure this particular radiation in order to measure the radiation pattern we just saw that the particular receiver antenna must be placed in the far field region and therefore the minimum distance that this particular antenna must be placed must be at a radial distance 2d squared by lambda that is this distance must be greater than 2d squared by lambda so this distance is greater than 2d squared by lambda so now the radiation pattern produced by this transmitter now reaches the receiver antenna so here these are the following components present in the receiver antenna let me just give you a brief introduction or a brief overview of the particular components present in the receiver side so first this is the receiver antenna and then this goes to a particular antenna driving unit so what the antenna driving unit does is that it controls the value of theta and phi so that we can move this particular antenna or rotate this particular antenna so when the value of theta varies the antenna rotates like this and when the value of phi varies the antenna rotates like this so that is how the antenna driving unit varies the value of theta and phi to change the position of this particular antenna so next we have the position control unit the position control unit is the unit that is responsible for controlling the movement of this antenna by varying the value of theta and phi so this position control unit tells the antenna driving unit through what value theta and phi must be varied so as to control the position of this particular antenna so next we have the position indicator so the position indicator obtains the value of theta and phi and always stores at what position this particular theta and phi is at so that is what position indicator does that is it just indicates the position of this particular antenna with respect to theta and phi that is what value theta and phi has that is indicated by the position indicator so here in this particular antenna the value of theta can vary from 0 to pi and the value of phi can vary from 0 to 2 pi so now let us see when the particular radiation moves from this transmitter it is received by this particular receiver so it goes like this like this and then the magnitude of this particular received radiation is obtained at the receiver okay so this receiver now moves the particular magnitude of this particular radiation to the radiation pattern recorder so the radiation pattern recorder is the device that records the particular radiation pattern that we need okay so now what all does this radiation pattern have the receiver gives the magnitude of the received radiation pattern towards this radiation pattern recorder and the position indicator what does the position indicator do it gives the value of theta and phi to this radiation pattern recorder 
So the radiation pattern recorder has the magnitude of the received signal as well as the value of theta and phi from this particular position indicator. So once you have the magnitude of the radiation as well as the value of theta and phi, we can easily plot the radiation pattern of the radiation that was produced by this particular antenna and received by this particular antenna as simple as that so this thus is how we measure the radiation pattern which is produced by a particular antenna we just saw what radiation pattern is why we need to measure the radiation pattern how we can measure the radiation pattern and the experimental measurement apparatus required to measure the radiation pattern produced by a particular antenna so i hope you guys have understood how we can measure the radiation pattern of an antenna and stay tuned for more such videos of module 2 thanks for watching guys and thank you